So now we're going to look at grey hair and the techniques we use in suggesting that. I'm starting off with my embossing tool again. When um, it's very pale grey hair like this, I'm going to use this embossing tool quite a lot. Obviously where there's areas where it's a solid, highlighted area like that, you, you don't really need to do it with this, you can leave that bit light as you're working. And I'm just following the direction of the curl with my tool. And taking the lines right from up where they start in the head there, you can see that all these little white lines dropped out against the the colour of the skin. So I'm going to put those in. It just means that if we use the embossing tool to do it, we can just then put one sweep of colour over in the skin tone and the effect will be done rather than us taking a long time and making individual tiny fine lines of the skin colour underneath. I'll demonstrate what I mean in a minute. And just as I'm going along, I'm noticing the colour of this gentleman's grey hair. There's quite a lot of yellow in this area here, but then these curls up here are quite grey. That's grey, but it's got a yellow tinge to the pale areas. So that gives me, helps me to pick out the pencils I'm going to use. Just be aware of which colours are going to go where already. using more embossing on this highlighted area there. And as with all the other types of hair, just as well as following the lines and direction of the curls, I'm just going to put some random odd ones in in different directions as well, just to make it look more natural. I'm just going to extend this a little bit down into his beard hair. The, the hair on his head is becoming coarser just where his beard starts as well. It's a bit different, difficult to distinguish where his beard starts and his hair ends. So I'll extend it down into there as well. When you're doing the beard hairs, they're working in the same way, but you're not having to follow a specific direction. They're very randomly placed and shorter strokes just to give that texture. Okay, now I'm going to start with a, a mid-tone warmish grey. Like I say, this area's got some yellow in it, so we're going to use quite a warm grey. And I'm just going to mark in some of these curves. That one there I'm just using, because the curl changes direction when it gets to there, I'm just marking that one in so I've got a line to follow with the rest. And because there's a lot of light areas, we're just working a little bit more carefully than with the other types of hair. You don't want to add too much colour because there's obviously a lot of white showing. For that reason as well, it's a lot quicker to work up grey hair, you're not having to put as much colour in at all. And people with grey hair, you tend to be able to see quite a lot of the skin tone through. Because generally they have, not always, but quite often have sparser hair as well. This area where we did all that embossing, I just want to show you that just by colouring over like that, those embossing lines are going to be revealed. Maybe you want to put one or two areas where it's more dense hair, just suggest those with lines, but the rest of the time you can just colour over. You can start to see them coming out now. And then I'd just extend this colour into the beginnings of these first curls. 
and there again <coughs> in that area there there's quite a lot of um, the flesh colour shown through it's not actually I'm not actually seeing down to the skin it's reflected colour from the skin around or we'll just use the same the same pencil I'm just going to pick out that dark area there. It'll help our curl stand out. This is a brown I'm using. I won't try and steer clear of using too much black. I'm just going to switch to a bit more of a bluey grey. And you can see in these light areas you almost can just maybe use one or two light strokes will give the impression of the light area of the curl you're really not having to put much colour on at all even grey hair though is not just built up of the one colour of hair strand so introducing two, three, four different pencil colours even if you're only using them a tiny amount in the darkest areas, it's just going to give a better effect. What you don't want with hair of any colour is solid blocks of colour. You need to just be working all the time with single strokes and building it up. With curly hair, you, you can always use a bit of artistic license and just, if you don't like the direction a curl's going, if it doesn't seem to balance on your portrait, you can, you can change it. As long as you keep the ones that, that bound the face, I would say, try and keep the way they come out of the face the same as on the photograph. But say, if you, you know, if, if you want to pick out a particularly interesting curl or duplicate it somewhere else, that could be quite a nice thing to do. The curly hair is quite forgiving in allowing you to do those things. Like I mentioned before, this area down here where the curls are sort of softer they're quite yellow as well, so I'm just going to introduce a little bit of a, a blonde hair tone as well. Just erasing some of this, I think I've gone a little bit too dark in some of the areas.
I think it's a, a, a marble grey, a slate grey. When you're working on the hair, it does always, I think, help to get these areas where it, where the hair meets the face, where it's starting out from at the top of the head or the side of the head, but also where curls fall or if you've got long hair, where it goes behind the jaw. If you put in the dark areas first, it can just help you get the colours and the tones of the hair accurate in the right places. Just gives you a, a, a reference point to work from. And also, like I said before, the most important curls or any hair are the places it, it surrounds the face because that's what's going to um, make your portrait have a likeness of the sitter. I'm just working with the skin tone and two or three shades of greys and just carrying on building up the curls in exactly the same way over that entire head. So that's the end of that lesson. I hope it's helped you learn how to draw grey curls.